Comic Cons are finally starting to happen again, but this is everything that I wish I knew before I went to one. With Ruth! Hey guys, it's me Marcus aka The Mad Dog and we're back with another video. So this is going to be my next instalment in my beginner's guide to series. We're going to talk about how to pick a convention, what you should take with you and also just some of the general tips and tricks that I've learned along the way. First up, making your selection. Now it depends which country you're in because I know that if you're in America and even in the UK there are quite a lot of conventions that happen consistently throughout the year. It's worth considering these things that I'm going to point out. First up is going to be the date of the event. Now unfortunately this is something that you cannot change. You either have to be there or not. Not, so it's worth looking when things are happening and other factors that you might need to consider such as the weather when the event is taking place and also if it might be one of those moments throughout the year when it's not really a good financial decision for you to go to a comic con. As well I always think it's best to pick one that's about two or three months away because then you can really get hyped for it. If it is that you need to save money you can make those adjustments there before you actually go. As well one little thing that I noticed from some of the UK conventions that I went to, I normally notice that the one towards Christmas has more retailers that bring more stuff for them because of the fact that they know more people are buying gifts. Next up is a location and this one might seem obvious but there's some things that people don't take into consideration and this ends up being the downfall of their experience. Yep, I'm already hammering in the dramatics this early on in the video. But you have to look at your individual situation. If you're going to go to a comic con that's three hours or so away, how are you going to get there? Are you going to book a train? In which case you're probably not going to be able to buy a lot of stuff because of the fact that you'll have to bring it back with you on the train. And if you are going on the train, please don't be one of those arseholes that decides to take up an entire seat with the bag or the statue that he decided to to buy. My life may not be worth as much as your Prime 1 Doomsday statue, but still, I'd like to sit down after a long day of walking around. As well, speaking about the location, you have to consider if it's going to be viable for you to go there within one day, or maybe you need to book a hotel. If that's the case, I'd recommend doing it much earlier, and one just bonus tip before we even get into the main tips, I would recommend getting a hotel that's slightly further away from the main convention centre, because the hotels that are pretty much on their doorstep know exactly why people are going that weekend, and they will ramp up the prices. As well, if you are in a country that doesn't have a lot of conventions so you're deciding to go abroad in order to visit one I would just recommend checking like the customs and if you need any kind of visa or anything like that. Admittedly I'm completely naive to all of that and I've only really been to UK conventions so far but I am not the guy to ask for advice on that. After that consider the size of the event. I know this might not seem a bit viable but I have genuinely been catfished by comic cons before. They make it look like it's going to be this massive thing and then you go and it's pretty much just in someone's shed. Yep I am looking at you Stoke Con Trent. You don't want it to be the case that you end up travelling for hours to go to one of these events and then you're disappointed and leave within half an hour. Another factor that does come with the size of the convention is the fact that there's more than likely going to be more people the bigger the event is. If it is that you know that you don't really react well with crowds or you don't like feeling claustrophobic, maybe go to one of these smaller convention centres because you might be able to move around a bit easier. The best comic convention that I've ever been to was in Birmingham and it was in some kind of conference centre and it was about 15 years ago but there were so many comic based guests that I ended up having a better time because it was at a smaller venue and even met Charlie Adlard and he gave me this Tyree sketch which I still love to this day. To this day! So if it is that you're looking to meet some of the people who are attending the Comic Con, you might want to go to a smaller event because it gives you more chance of actually being able to see them. Which brings me on to my next point, the guests. Which brings me on to my next point, the guests. Which brings me on to my next point, the guests. And yep, my lisp really did not want me to say that word. And if it is that maybe you can only go to one or two conventions a year, I definitely recommend prioritising one that's got more people that you want to meet. As well with some guests, they might not be able to attend every day that the event's going on for so it's worth checking when exactly they're going to be there and then planning your day around that because you might be able to drop on and if there's one specific person that you might want to meet if it is that they are based in the country that you're from anyway they're more than likely going to do some of those smaller conventions so this is what i'm getting at that you do have to weigh up what are the pros and cons of going to each convention and then deciding which one you think is going to bring the most enjoyment for you and the last point that i'm just going to touch on when deciding your comic con is who you can go with of course if you do go on your own you probably will meet people whilst you're there. A lot of people at Comic Con are very friendly. It's almost like the exact opposite of being anywhere that allows comments on the internet. But going with a friend or a partner, or I even used to go with my dad in the early days, it really helps heighten the experience. If it is that maybe you know that you're a little bit nervous about going, then going with a friend will help just alleviate some of that stress. And the reason why I'm putting this on is you might have a friend that you think will go to a convention with you, but they'll only go to one if it's local, they don't need to buy a hotel, or they don't need to pay too much to travel. Which is a valid point, so I'd definitely recommend 
recommend that if you are looking to go to a convention and you're not sure which to go, maybe prioritize the one that would mean that you'd have a good experience with someone else. Actually, something else that I'm going to add to the list, decide early on if you want a comic-based comic con or something that's more geared towards other kind of media. I know this might sound dumb, but admittedly, the comic is just pretty much a formality in the title. When I go to the bigger convention, it is more geared towards just general fan culture. There's not too many comic-based stalls, and that's okay because there are separate conventions that are more geared towards that. So have a bit of a look around. You can also get a good indication from who the guests are and who they publicise the most. If writers and artists are pretty much at the top of the guest page, then you know it's going to be one that's more geared towards comic books. And it might even be the case that you've only recently got into collecting and reading, but you're a big fan of the movies, the TV shows and the video games, so going to one of those conventions that gears more towards that would probably be better for you and you're probably going to branch out and find other things that you might like. But one thing that I myself first overlooked when I was going to conventions is the fact that you probably don't want to be carrying really heavy omnibuses around with you. Because if it is that you're probably like me when I first started going and you weigh less than £100 and you can barely pick up some of the books that you're reading, I would probably recommend just going to somewhere like Organic Price Books. They are the sponsor of this channel and they will also do the heavy lifting and make sure the book gets delivered to you. And they've got great packaging, fast shipping and amazing customer services and if you use code woof woof you'll get two dollars off your order next up what you should pack in your bag. This is a formula that I have built over years of making constant mistakes at Comic Con. First up, the bag itself. You want to make sure that you get a nice sturdy bag. This is mine and I brought it because it's sturdy and nice. It's got multiple compartments so that you can separate things. It's got really good heavy duty straps. It's also got the ability to lock it if it is that you're carrying any valuables. And you don't really want something that's maybe just a drawstring bag that's easily going to snap. You want something that's going to be able to endure whatever it is that you're buying. Why don't I make it sound like I'm sending people into battle. And the first thing that you're going to want to put in this bag is a second wallet. Yep, I am being serious and this is something that I've done with every bag that I've ever had since I got bullied quite a bit in high school. Although Comic Cons are generally crime free because of the fact that about 90 people are going to be dressed as Batman, you still don't want to be the person that maybe gets the wallet stolen or loses it and then you've got absolutely nothing to your name. So you might think that I'm being a scaremonger by doing this but I would rather have a spare wallet in my bag and not need it than need it and not have it. Secondly, you're going to want some deodorant. No, I am not sponsored by Right Guard, I'm sponsored by Organic Price Boot. So once again, woof woof for $2 off your order. But I would actually admittedly recommend getting a roll on. It's just that this is all I had before I was filming this video. And admittedly, the money that I'm going to make off this video is probably less than the cost of what that deodorant would be. So just bear with me here, guys. But having a roll on is better because of the fact that you're always pretty much guaranteed to be near somebody who says that they're asthmatic. So if you spray something like this, they're probably going to try and sue you. But you're going to want to make sure that you've got some kind of deodorant because it gets very warm, very clammy, and you don't want to be that guy that other people are walking around so that they don't have to smell you. Thirdly, and I was even doing this before this whole pandemic happened, but please make sure that you've got some hand sanitizer with you. You don't know what exactly you're touching, who's touched it before, maybe you shake someone's hand and you didn't realise just how moist it was in the palm. You just need one of those little bottles, it's not really going to take up too much space and just trust me, if you don't pack hand sanitizer, you will find yourself in a situation where you wish that you did. Next up, a sturdy sandwich. If you're asking me personally for a recommendation, I would recommend either the chicken triple or the all day breakfast triple. You get more sandwich but for the same price. But honestly, one of the most expensive things when you go to a convention is going to be the food and you don't want to be one of those people that gets caught out and then all of a sudden you're paying about 15 quid for a hot dog that would probably be about 50p from Ikea. Again, I'm not sponsored by Ikea but you know, that's something that I'd be up for. I don't really have a sandwich that I can show you at this mini. I did but then I got hungry whilst I was setting up my lights. If it is that you you bought a sandwich from home so you didn't get the meal deal good for you you've probably saved three or four quid but what i would recommend is a water bottle that's in a really sturdy container keep this away from the main section of the bag but just trust me you are gonna get thirsty whilst you're in a convention and you're probably thinking to yourself that you don't need to do this because there's going to be plenty of places that are selling water whilst you're at the center but then you're going to get there and you're going to realize that somebody is charging you about two quid for 250 milliliters of what is pretty much just god's earth juice so just trust me and bring yourself a water bottle also just make sure that you've got yourself a little notebook and a pen you never know who you're gonna meet and also you might make a connection with somebody and maybe your phone's got no signal because of the fact that there's never any kind of data that goes into a convention center i would also recommend just bringing a spare t-shirt with you and a spare pair of socks because this is something that i do wherever i go because if you've got to walk to the convention center and it's raining you do not want to be walking around with wet socks yeah i should probably just stop buying cheap shoes but this works for me and the last thing that you're going to want to pack in your bag if you did stay overnight is all the stuff that you stole from your hotel now 
we're going to be getting into my top 10 tips, but it actually became 13 because of the fact that I really can't count. But first up, I would recommend folding your money. So I can't remember where I learned this, but for each denomination, make sure you fold it in a different way. When you pull it out, you will know exactly what you've got and you know that you're not going to grab more than one note. Number two, I would definitely recommend buying early entry if it's available. Now, don't get me wrong, I did enjoy London Comic Con whilst I was there, but the first two hours where I could just casually go about and it wasn't overcrowded were the best part of it for me. As soon as everybody started coming in, it got more difficult to get to stalls, it got more difficult to just walk around, so you don't feel like you're rushed for time and it's just worth buying it because it's normally about five or ten quid more than the usual ticket. And as a side point, like a 2A or whatever we're going to call it, just pre-buy your tickets. You might have planned everything out, you've already got your train tickets, your hotel, and all you just gotta do is go to the convention center on the day and buy a general entry ticket. No. Especially if you're deciding to go to a big convention on the Saturday, there's a very high chance that it might sell out. So as soon as you know that you're going to that convention, I would recommend buying your tickets. You can also get cool stuff like a priority entrance so that you don't have to wait in a massive queue, and it's just gonna help you relax a little bit more, and it's one thing less that can go wrong. Thirdly, once it opens, Prioritize a few stalls that you really want to go to, but then what I'd recommend doing as soon as possible is going to the back of the convention center and working your way to the front. Now, the majority of cons do make sure that the floor plans are published early so that you can actually see where you need to go. Use this to your advantage because there's so many people that will just go in and just stop at the first thing that they see. And as well, you might be slightly worried because of the fact that some of the big companies like Funko, Hasbro, and Bandai tend to have exclusives with them that are specific for that convention. And because they normally tend to stock quite well, you're probably going to be safe and you're not really at risk of missing out. Whereas the stalls at the back are normally the independent sellers, the ones that tend to sell stuff that are quite rare, and that's where you can really find the hidden gems, but they're not going to stock as well as these big companies when it comes to the exclusives. Fourthly, and I haven't really touched on cosplay at all, but if you are going to go dressed up in some elaborate costume, please have spatial awareness. Now, I don't like to make generalizations, but the more elaborate someone's design is, the less spatial awareness they've got. If they've got massive wings that are pointing out, they are definitely just gonna be turning like this all the time. You're gonna get your eye poked out and somehow it's gonna be your fault. Actually, I'm not even gonna extend this to cosplays because the majority of them are quite decent. Like I remember at London, I met this guy who had this phenomenal Carmen Rider design. So actually, I'm gonna just extend this in general to whoever you are, whether you're in cosplay or not, be spatially aware. I'm going to make this clear in no uncertain terms, but nobody wants their face in your armpit. And for some reason, when you're at a comic convention, I don't know if it's because people get really excited, but they just forget how to move about. I cannot tell you how many idiots I see at every convention that I go to that just decide to start walking backwards. And they will then act like it's your fault because you didn't move out of the way in the busiest aisle that they are now deciding to walk backwards in. Or they will decide to deliberately walk the wrong way into an oncoming crowd. Now I know in the last tip I said to work backwards but at the same time they might have systems to the easy traffic actually follow those layouts. It's going to make everybody's time at the convention more enjoyable and if it is that you don't want to go down an aisle just go to the next one but follow the same route that it's telling you to go. I can't believe I'm doing a YouTube channel where I'm genuinely in a video teaching people how to walk. Honestly I'd like to think that anybody who's watching this video would have enough common sense to know those kind of things but maybe you've got a friend that doesn't know that well a make sure that they watch this video and b just make sure that they're aware we can all just look out for each other and then everybody's experience can be more enjoyable fifthly make sure that you wear comfortable shoes again if you're in cosplay this might not be possible because of the fact that it's part of your design but even just get a pair of cheap insoles it'll just make the entire experience better for you and no matter what time of year the convention is make sure that you dress light you might think that if you go in a winter convention that it's going to be really cold in there but because of the fact that there's so many people packed into one space Space, it's going to get warm quickly. You don't want to be walking around with a massive thick hoodie on. Maybe you've even got a leather coat. Maybe you've got your Ugg boots on. If people still buy them, I'm really not with fashion. But then all of a sudden, about 10 minutes into the convention, you're sweating so much that people think that you're cosplaying as Hydra Man. So yeah, I just generally recommend dressing light. Actually, you know what? I'm going to add an extra tip in here, and that's probably the wrong phraseology for what I'm about to say. But if there is somebody that's in cosplay, don't go up and just touch them. I saw this happening so often, and it baffles me that people think that just because they're in a 
a certain design, you can just go up and touch people. So just make sure that you're being respectful to everyone that you see. You don't want to be labeled as that creepy person at the comic convention. Like I said though, again, I don't feel like many people that are watching this are really gonna break that rule in the first place, but it's still worth mentioning. Number seven now, I think I've lost count, but don't be afraid to ask stalls if they can keep stuff for you until the end. So if you buy something that is maybe a bit awkward to carry, or maybe it's quite heavy, you can actually ask that stall if they're willing to save it for you. They normally keep it behind the desk and just make sure that you're keeping track, maybe in your notebook, of where exactly you've got stuff that you need to go back to at the end. But it might help you to get around easier if it is that you do want to buy something early on, but you don't want to carry it around. As well, there is sort of this unspoken rule that you can haggle whilst you're at a comic convention, but what I would ask is to be respectful. No, somebody is not going to sell you a 9.8 graded Amazing Fantasy issue 15 for 10 quid because of the fact that you say it's that or nothing. Number nine, make sure you've got the day after work booked off. But comic cons are knackering and you don't really realise it until the next day when you're really tired, you're groggy, your legs hurt, your feet hurt, everything hurts. I legit had the best nap of my life after I came back from London Comic Con and honestly, this is a little fact between you and me, I haven't napped since that day. It just feels like there's no point, I've already peaked. Number 10 I think, but I kind of touched on this earlier, but just remember that whatever you buy, you have to find a way to bring back with you. Even if you have a hotel for that night and maybe you're going for a couple days, you then still have to find a way to bring that home. And the stuff that you buy can accumulate very quickly and all of a sudden you don't realise that you've got no way of bringing it back. You can also find a way to ease this if it is that you know that you're going to be buying prints from certain artists. You can buy one of those artist tubes that you can carry on your back. Again, maybe you've got a bigger bag that has quite a bit more space, but just find a way that you can make it as easy as possible. Number 11, make sure that you plan your day. Time goes very quickly when you're in a convention centre and you won't realise that you've missed something that was probably the reason that you went there in the first place. There might be panels that you're excited for or guests that are only going to be there for a set amount of time. There might be a guest that you really want to see that is charging for autographs, charging for pictures. Maybe that's something that you don't agree with, but it is what it is. And the fact of the matter is that some of the guests that are there might have had to pay just to be there. So if you're not happy to pay that, then don't pay it. Don't think that you're going to be able to just chance it and guilt trip your way into getting the thing that you want for free because they've probably seen it all before and you're not going to get what you want. So it's worth just going through the convention's website, seeing exactly what's happening where and when, and then just making sure that you can make the most of your time whilst you're there. Next up, Budget. If you know that some of your budget is to get you home, then make sure that you put that money aside and you MC hammer it because you can't touch it. I have genuinely gone to a convention with a guy who spent all of his money on the first stall that he saw and then it was a very long day for him. He also found some of the stuff at a cheaper price at a different stall when we were just walking about. So it is just worth making sure that you keep track of yourself, you know exactly how much money you've spent and how much money you've still got. And the penultimate tip, and this is the one that I do really wish I would have known before I even went to my first convention, sent it and I'm gonna get a bit softer I'm gonna stop shouting at you all the time but if you're nervous or anxious about going to convention know that it'll be worth pushing through if you do end up going and this tip might not apply to a lot of people but if it applies to one person that's watching this then I'd rather say it but it's more than likely that you will have a good time once you go there and you'll probably regret it if you do end up backing out even if you're going on your own and that's the reason why you're nervous you might meet some friends along the way at the end of the day I do think it's one of the more enjoyable parts of the comic book collecting hobby so you might feel like you're gonna have a bad time if you go maybe you've got those doubts that have just been building up but just push them to the back of your head for now and go and have a good time my last tip though and this one's gonna be really specific but if you're in the UK make sure that you go to the custom cupcake company but they have the nicest fudge that I've ever tasted and they make the most extraordinary cupcakes that would actually be the store that I would recommend going to first because they can put a box aside and once they sell out they are sold out but that's the video I guess hopefully it has helped at least one person feel a bit more confident about going to convention and if you could do me a massive favor just make sure that you share this video where you can and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and if you didn't why did you get this far but that's going to be it for now just make sure that you stay safe and stay mad all you dogs woof woof see you at the next video